It's 10 o'clock. Good evening. Welcome to The World Tonight with James Kimarasamy. Now, it just wasn't cricket. Oh, no. Don't look at this. We've got people running on. Wow. This is terrible. Oh, oh Johnny B. Johnny B's gone for it. Pesto's there. Orange, smoke and dust. They're trying to keep them off the pitch. Protesters, two of them. They've managed to keep them off the pitch. And Johnny Bairstow is taking one of the protesters off, is carrying him off. That was the moment when England's wicket-keeper came up with a new type of dismissal, not caught, stumped, but carried off the pitch. The man out, just one of the two Just Stop Oil protesters who'd been carrying orange powder and who had invaded the pitch during the second Ashes test at Lord's today. Well, this afternoon, the group posted a pre-arrest video message from one of the two activists, 21-year-old biochemistry student Daniel. The picture they paint of the future, nothing is done with these, like, deadly, deadly heat waves. And just anybody who's outside hasn't doesn't have access to aircon could die within a few hours. I don't want to live through that, and I don't want anyone else really to live through that, whether they come after me or. And so I feel like I just have to do something. And if it has any small chance of you know maybe convincing more people to come and do something, then I'll do it. But is direct action the best way to get the message across about the climate emergency, or would more inclusive, perhaps less alienating forms of public engagement be more effective? Well, joining me now, someone who's thought a lot about this, Professor Rupert Reed, a climate campaigner who was one of the public faces of Extinction Rebellion, but is now taking a different path as co-director of the newly launched Climate Majority Project. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, tell us a bit about your journey. Well... I learned something while I was in XR, and that's that in the end, we don't actually win unless we take people with us. And that learning has inspired me to do what I'm doing now with launching the Climate Majority Project tomorrow. I think it's very clear that what the radical flank of the environmental movement can do, sometimes brilliantly, is to raise awareness. But already a few years ago, I think we dramatically did raise awareness. And now the question is, what's the best way to capitalise on that accomplishment? And we think in the Climate Majority Project that it's for millions of us to act decisively in bringing about a future wherever we have power in our lives, in our neighbourhoods, where we work and so forth. It doesn't have to involve the kinds of tactics that Just Stop will use. What does that look like, though? So in our neighbourhoods, it looks, for example, like community climate action. It looks like people getting together across the entire community and starting to build resilience. And one of the great things about that is when people see other people acting as if our future is perilous, they start to realise, my God, you know, we're not talking about 2050 or 2100 here. We're talking about something which is already coming. In our workplaces, it looks like, for example, the lawyers who we work with who are seeking in some cases to change the way that um, their clients come to them to refuse to act for fossil fuel clients or in other cases they're working within corporations uh, unlikely uh, climate activists senior corporate lawyers who are seeking to make their own corporations turn in the right kind of direction basically everybody has some kind of power where they live or where they work and that's what we need to bring into alignment, millions of us doing that. Is there still a role, though, for, for direct action? Well, look, uh, I very much sympathise with the, the young man whose clip you played earlier. He's right to be afraid. Uh, if you're not sometimes afraid right now, then you're not paying attention. And I think what many listeners will be feeling is an increasing sense of alarm that our governments are not responding sufficiently to the alarm that has been raised. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling that way, then my message is you're not going mad, you're not alone, we're millions, we are legion, and increasingly we're ready to roll up our sleeves and engage in community climate action, in workplace action, in actions mm -hmm. in our profession, because James, the reality is that we need to act like we're all in this together because in the end, when it comes to climate, we actually are. Well, we heard, of course, today from the Climate Change Committee that the UK is making worryingly slow progress on cutting carbon emissions. I mean, some might argue that actually disrupting an international test match might make that, that point more likely to penetrate the public consciousness than the things that you're advocating, however more long-term and more inclusive they might be. Well, look, as I've said, there is clearly a place for raising the alarm. But what I think most people feel 
is that while they don't necessarily want to take part in the tactics of, say, Just a Boil themselves, they want to do something about it. They want to make a positive difference. And what we're saying is, look, when enough people do do something about it, that will be something which governments are unable to ignore. Doing something meaningful that adds up to something massive, if enough of us go down that path, then it won't any longer be the case that people feel the need to have to run onto cricket pitches. And there is also, of course, a role here for the media, James. It's really important that the media doesn't only report on the spectacular. And so, of course, it's a good thing that you're having me on this evening. And we need, frankly, a lot more of that. We need to make sure that people don't feel that they have to run onto cricket pitches to get onto programmes like yours. Dr Rupert Reid, uh, the Climate Majority Project officially launches tomorrow. Thanks very much.